and gentlemen, would you give a welcome to Danny and Cynthia as they worship with the prelude, All Hail, the Power of Jesus' Name. And we were watching the life of Danny, and uh, this morning is a celebration of 40 years of ministry here at Cooksbury. I was not even born back then uh, when he started. <laughs> yeah, all right. So let's worship God as we enjoy All Hail, the Power of Jesus' Name. Good morning. Welcome to worship today. I'm Charles Maynard, one of the pastors here, and we're so glad that you've come on this particular Sunday. We have many things that are a part of this service, and one of those is celebrating Danny Bryan's ministry, but we'll do a little more with that later. Right now, I want to call your attention to two events that occurred this week. Um, our, our former Associate Pastor, our former District Superintendent Jason Gaddis, um, had surgery to remove a kidney in order to give it to a friend. So, uh, Jason is recovering. Randy Martin is recovering from the transplant surgery that occurred a little earlier this week. Um, they're both doing well. But I just want to mention that, that act of sacrifice on Jason's part. Uh, for our friend Randy Martin, who has been struggling with kidney disease for quite a while. And then with that thought of sacrifice, I also want to rem remember the other event that occurred this week, yesterday, was Veterans Day. And in the spring, we have Memorial Day where we remember those who have died in our country's service. This is the day we remember those who have served sacrificially, I might add, for their country in the armed forces. And many of you have done that, and we would ask that you stand. Those of you that have served in any of the armed forces, stand for a moment and let us thank you. Sacrifice comes in many ways, and we often remember those who have died in our country's service. But when you give your life, your days, your time, your talents, that is a sacrifice as well. And so we appreciate 
deeply appreciate those of you that have served. And those of you that were alongside as a spouse of those who have served. Thank you. Let's have a moment of prayer. Gracious God, we're thankful for the many ways that we see sacrificial love around us. We're thankful for those who have given of themselves in the service of our nation. We're thankful for Jason and his sacrifice to give to a friend, Randy. Be with them in their recovery. Guide us today as we worship you. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Now let's stand and sing, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. standing as we say these historic words of the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence shall come to drudge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
We come our second hymn is when in our music God is glorified and we glorify him in music. Amen. I need those things now. wonderful part of our service today is a baptism, and I ask Caroline if you'll come up and your family to join and stand with you. You all have a part in this as well as what Caroline and Rebecca and I are doing. Sisters and brothers in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We're incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Today, I present to you Caroline Estelle Sellers to be baptized. Now, Caroline, we're going to be asking you questions that you know on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Will you turn away from the powers of sin and death? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they may present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as our Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. Now, this is an act of coming into the church. You are the church, so stand up with us, please. And we will be asking you questions now. Will you nurture Caroline in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example, she may be guided in accepting God's grace, professing her faith openly, and lead a Christian life? We will. 
Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Caroline in your care? With, With God's, God's help, help, we will we proclaim, proclaim the, the good, good news, news and live yeah. according to the example of Christ. We will surround Caroline with a community of love and forgiveness that she may grow in her trust of God and be found faithful in her service to others. We will pray for her that she may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. Let us pray. Eternal God, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the waters of the Jordan to the land which you promised. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit, and by this gift of water, call to our remembrance the grace declared to us in our baptism. For you have washed away our sins, and you clothe us with righteousness throughout our lives, that dying and rising with Christ, we may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal God, through your Savior, our Son, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Amen. Okay. And what you're going to do is step over here. Caroline Estelle Sellers, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Yeah, stand up. And we're going to say something else, the two of us. Caroline Estelle. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, Spirit worked work within, within you, you that having been, been born, born through water and the Spirit, Spirit you, you may live as faithful, faithful disciples of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious God, we're thankful for the gift of this, your child, Caroline. Be with her in the days and years to come as she continues to walk as a disciple of your son. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's help. We're going to go that way. Yeah. We, we got another towel, too. Okay. There. No, we need to dry it up. All right.
This is the time that our children from kindergarten to fourth grade, if you'd like to go and be a part of things, Miss Melody's in the back. And we're glad that you all are here and a part of that. A couple of things that I want to remind you about. Christmas Hope is our gift ministry to families in need that are connected to us in some kind of way. So us as Cokesbury. That's through Recovery, Susanna's House, Fig Tree, Manna House, some of the partner ministries that we work with in the community, just people in need. And we as a congregation buy new gifts from Target or Amazon. And the reason we do that is we have a registry at both of those places. And then the families get to come and shop for those at a greatly reduced price. Uh, that way they get the dignity of choosing what they want for their children, but also in, in paying for it as well. And so uh, you see, it's not just a handout, it's a hand up, it's to help out. And so that means that we need to fill up Christmas Hope, uh, that store that they are going to shop in. And so you can find links to shop at, on our uh, to shop our, our Target or Amazon registries on your Cokesbury app. Just tap the holidays banner, or uh, you can go to cokesbury.tv slash news. Uh, we also will welcome Target gift cards, if that's what you'd like to do, and we can do some of the purchasing from that. I just want to remind you that this occurs on uh, Tuesday, December 5th on the North Campus, this dinner. It's a dinner for all of us. And it's a time to celebrate together as a church this Christmas season. We'll be together in worship on Christmas Eve and throughout December, but this is a special moment, and we'll have a time together. So, uh, there is an RSVP just to give us an idea that you're coming so that we have enough for everybody. But there will be a sit-down dinner at that time. Next week, uh, next Sunday, the Oak Ridge Philharmonia will play Scheherazade at 4 p.m. Um, I happen to know, I'm, I'm on good terms with the conductor, and uh, he's worried about this. Uh, Scheherazade is no easy piece, and so this orchestra has been practicing it. Do you want to say a word? A short word? Yeah. Yes, it's a short word. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you so much. So next, it's a free concert. Please uh, plan to attend. It's a fascinating playing three pieces. And if I may say, Charles, also next Sunday morning, uh, we have a very special service with True. good uh, music for Thanksgiving. So we're celebrating Thanksgiving next Sunday morning, and our district superintendent, Ann Robbins, will be here to preach. Uh, so again, play next Sunday. Have a busy Sunday morning here, and then concert at four. Thank you, Charles. Thanks. Was that short? That's short enough. Uh, <laughs> we come and offer ourselves in many ways. We offer ourselves in ministry. We offer ourselves uh, each and every day as we surround people uh, that need God's love. But another way we share our, ourselves is in the offering. So as we come today, let's begin with a prayer. Gracious God, each and every gift that we offer to you has come to us from you. We offer to you your own. And help us as we offer ourselves as well. Be with us. Guide us and lead us as your people. Help us to be peacemakers in a, war torn, in a world torn by war and conflict. Help us to be your people in each and every situation. For it's in the name of Jesus that we pray and that we pray the prayer that he taught us to pray in saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, 
and the glory forever. Amen. Many things today, many special things, but Danny, if you will come join Marcelo and Rebecca and I have here, and Cynthia, why don't you come up and stand with us as well. 40 years of service, friends, the longest staff member serving. <laughs> I'll help you up, old man. <laughs> Come over here. <laughs> 40 years.
<laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and we all three have something that we want to give to you. I'll let 39-year-old Marcelo do his, <laughs> since he was apparently born after you started. Uh, it is uh, um, rather difficult to speak about somebody so important, so meaningful. Uh, like Danny, and uh, I know that I'm going to go home, and I could have said that, I could have said that, but let me see if I can capture the essence. Uh, I'm going to speak in three capacities. First, I'm going to speak as a, the choir conductor, and I speak on behalf of this wonderful choir here. Danny has been a blessing to us every single week. He is dedicated, he is committed, he, he loves to see us thrive in the music ministry, and uh, the choir couldn't ask for a better accompanist and a better better friend. Right, choir? <laughs> the second capacity as I speak is the maestro in me. When I hear Danny play, I hear a very special touch. And music has many subtleties. We all connect to music in different ways. And uh, I connect with Danny's playing because I see that special touch. I see that retardando right at the right spot. I see his fingers singing. It's like a beautiful voice. And finally, I speak as a friend and colleague. Uh, when I came to Cokesbury, I didn't expect that I was going to find such a wonderful Christian. And Danny is not only a friend, we spend lots of time here. You see sometimes after worship we're talking, and we're most, mostly talking two things, horses and cars. So right <laughs> <now>. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but, but above everything else, I can tell you, Danny is a guy who loves the Lord, and he loves worship, and he loves the connection with Christ as he has and as he leads us all into Danny, thank you so much. The choir has prepared a few gifts for you. So here they are, brother. Now, I speak, I speak as your pastor, but also as one who loves you dearly, who appreciates you so much. You give us a gift every and we're so thankful for that. And we as the church want you to have a special gift from all of us as a small token of our love and appreciation. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't think you were thinking it through. <laughs> Twenty-seven years we've been working we together. We go back a long way, don't we? So I, I, I am absolutely blown away that it has been 40 years in ministry that you've been here. It's so, such an incredible thing. But I've worked with a number of churches and church organists and pianists and musicians. And generally, I would not be able to say this about those other people, but about you... <laughs> I can say, Danny, your heart is so perfect for the Lord. And you, the way you never, oh, fear. <laughs> the, the way you never argue about anything, it's like whatever anybody asks of you, you do it. Amen. And it has been the most incredible blessing to know you all these years. Now, I said, I've said that sort of past tense. I don't mean that past tense. Danny's not going anywhere. Right, right. Yeah, I was, You're not retiring. I was worried about that. <laughs> That's later. He also, <laughs> Danny also has a sense of humor, but it is, it's been such a joy to work with you. And this is uh, just a plaque for you to put on your wall to remind you of us and this place. Uh, 40 years of worship and service to Cokesbury Church, to Danny Bryan. Thank you for sharing your gifts with us. That's a small thing, but we love you. We love you, love you, love you. And stay as long as you can. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know Amen. if I'll make another 40, but I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know what 110 can do over there at the, at the piano. Cokesbury, I came to Knoxville on a, uh, 
a degree, I mean, working on a degree in Murfreesboro, as you're going to soon find out I don't speak well, but uh, I just wanted to tell you how I came about Cokesbury. I was looking around for a church job and had found a couple, and I had uh, uh, auditioned, and it was actually working well for this one church. I won't mention the name. It was a Baptist church, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, the, uh, but a friend of mine from Murfreesboro who attended Cokesbury called me and said, Cokesbury needs an organist. Do you want to go audition? And I said, well, sure, because you were there. And she said, it's a wonderful church. And I said, okay. So I set it up. I was the last to audition. Uh, they were so tired. Uh, just, it, was, it was really late, and I got in from UT. Well, the organist before me didn't, was, had a missing leg. <laughs> So he was legless. He had one leg. I'm not sure how he did the pedals, but uh, they were kind of ready for me <laughs> after that one. So I, anyway, I got home and I got a phone call. Roxanne said, no need, to, uh, no need to go in front of the pastor parish or nothing. I told Jerry, I want this organist and I'm going to have him, and so you're hired. And I said, okay, here I am. <laughs> I love you guys so much. You're, 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 you're part of my DNA. I mean, I, you're, I just love you guys so much and, and look forward every Sunday to seeing you. Every Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. Let's thank him again. Love you. Love you so much. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to be here. Rebecca is right. Uh, we get to serve with many different people. There is a saying among pastors, uh, do you know what the difference between a church organist and a terrorist is? And the answer is you can negotiate with a terrorist. <laughs> that is not true of that man. <laughs> he is someone that we work with side by side all the time, and it's wonderful. Hear these words from the Scriptures today. I'm first reading from Deuteronomy 10, 12 through 16. What does the Lord your God ask of you? Only this, to revere the Lord your God by walking in all His ways, by loving Him, by serving the Lord your God with all your heart and being, and by keeping the Lord's commandments and His regulations that I am commanding you right now. It's for your own good. Clearly, the Lord owns the sky, the highest heavens, the earth, and everything in it. But the Lord adored your ancestors, loving them and choosing the descendants that followed them. You, from all other people, that's how things still stand now. So circumcise your hearts and stop being so stubborn. Because the Lord your God is the God of all gods and the Lord of all lords, the great, mighty, and awesome God who doesn't play favorites and doesn't take bribes. And then from Romans 12, 10, love one another from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil. Hold on for dear life to good. Be good friends who love deeply. Practice playing second fiddle. These are the word of God for the people of God. And we say thanks be to God.
Good morning, friends. It's an emotional day, isn't it? Yeah. Baptism, Danny, all the things, all the music. It's a very emotional day. But you know, I had a choir director one time say I was in a, a, a time of, of learning in a seminar with this particular choir director, and uh, we were learning a piece of music that was for Mother's Day. And I just lost it in the middle of this choir rehearsal with all these people around because it was, it, was just, it was just such a touching, touching song. And I said to him, um, uh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And he said, why are you sorry? He said, if you can't cry in church, where can you cry? <laughs> and that has stuck with me all these years. And so when it wells up in me, I let it go right here in church. And it's, it's great. Breaking good news is what we're talking about. Breaking good news. Breaking good news, breaking news is rarely, in my experience, good news. I remember the olden days when Walter Cronkite would break into my favorite TV shows, probably Gilligan, Gilligan's Island or something like that, and he would break in with these words, 
we interrupt this program to bring you this news from wherever. And interestingly, I can't think of a single time when it was good news. It was always bad news. And this time of year, I think of being in my elementary school classroom when Walter Cronkite broke into the program and to say, we interrupt this program to bring you this news from Dallas, Texas, where President John F. Kennedy has been shot. You know, that was on November 22, 1963, 60 years ago next week. And after that, any pro time that programming was on and they broke into it like that, I had a, sort of a physical reaction with this sinking feeling in my stomach because breaking news was never good news on TV. But despite all that bad news, I learned to look for the good news. My dad, as I have mentioned before, is the eternal optimist, and no matter what was going on in the world, he didn't allow us as a family to dwell on that negativity. As a pastor, he preached about the saving grace and the love of Jesus above all things. And no matter what was happening around us, Jesus is the answer. And that's the good news. So today, we interrupt the world to bring you the good news of Jesus. Danny Bryan has been leading Cokesbury in worship for 40 years, and in that 40 years, we've learned a lot of hymns and songs that have taught us the faith, and then nurtured our faith, restored our faith, and always brought us to a place of genuine gratitude and gladness. Singing and music helps us internalize the good news of Jesus so that we never forget it. The words of hymns that we hear and repeat and learn give us the foundation that cannot be moved. It's been said that Christians learn more from their, of their working theology from the hymns they sing than from any other source, and I believe that. I'm sure that even includes sermons somehow. But when we sing our faith, when we describe God's faithfulness or love or grace or provision, when we sing the scriptures, we internalize it. We remember it. We write it on our hearts. The songs that we sing in worship not only reflect our faith, but they shape our faith. As we sing the love and grace of Jesus, those words begin to churn and move us toward places that we might not have gone the bad news in our world is generated by expressions of our negative selves. War, hatred, lies, misinformation, theft, selfishness, pride, unkindness, unfaithfulness, all the uns. There are no hymns about those things. Instead, hymns and worship songs lead us to the positive side of our nature as we sing those affirmations of who God is, who we are, and then the intersection of us together. And friends, that's the good news. For instance, today's scripture from Deuteronomy 10, 17 extols the nature of God. The Lord your God is the God of all gods, the Lord of all lords, the great almighty and awesome God who doesn't play favorites and doesn't take bribes. So, then how would we sing that good news? How about this? Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Can you sing it? It's pretty simple, isn't it? Let's sing it. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and oh, our God is an awesome God. That's one way. Or what about the Hallelujah Chorus? I'm not going to ask you to sing that one. <laughs> but the Hallelujah Chorus is, 
King of kings and Lord of lords, and he shall reign forever and ever. Hallelujah. That's good news. Robert Fulgham wrote a little book 30 years ago that was an expression of the creed that he had written for his life. It's called, All I Really Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. You know the book? That little book became famous because it rang true for so many people. It was brilliant in its simplicity. What did Robert learn? Well, he learned this, to share everything, play fair, don't hit people, put things back where you found them, clean up your own mess, don't take things that aren't yours, say you're sorry when you hurt somebody, wash your hands before you eat, flush. <laughs> Warm cookies and cold milk are good for you. Always take an afternoon nap. When you go out in the world, watch for traffic. Hold hands and stick together. If everyone learned those principles and followed them, oh my, the world would be a better place, wouldn't it? I didn't go to kindergarten. <laughs> I guess I was deprived in that way. But I did go to Sunday school, and I learned songs that will never leave me that are the foundation of my faith. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. What great theology that is. Jesus loves me, and because he's strong, he can cover my weakness. That could keep me going every single day. How about Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. See, I believe that. I believe that we're all children of God. And that Jesus really loves all people equally, no matter what they look like. This is another thing that's foundational to my faith. And this is good news for me and for the world. Because I learned that Jesus loves me and all the children of the world, it helps me with the scripture that Charles read just a minute ago. Love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil. Hold on for dear life to good. Be good friends who love deeply. Practice playing second fiddle. Paul is almost begging the people in the Roman church to be different from their culture. Like Robert Fulgham, Paul says, it's really simple. He says, we can love from the center of our very being and we can be real. We don't have to wear a mask because God loves you and God loves me and God loves all the children in the world regardless of who we are. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. We are precious in his sight. So we don't have to try to outdo one another. We don't have to be me first. The teaching of Jesus in Matthew 20, 26 through 28 speaks about the need to be humble to one another. Be, but among you it will be different, he says. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must become your servant. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus says, good news. In the Jesus community, you don't have to climb over other people to get to the top. You don't have to be first. In fact, you should strive to serve others. And so to reflect that teaching, we sing the hymn, Help Us Accept Each Other. Hear these words. Help us accept each other as Christ accepted us. Teach us as sister, brother, each person to embrace be present, Lord, among us, and bring us to believe we are ourselves accepted and learn to love and live. Lord, for today's encounters with all who are in need, who hunger for acceptance, for righteousness and bread, we need new eyes for seeing, new hands for holding on, 
Renew us with your spirit, so free us, make us one. Hymns and worship songs stir our emotions and call us to be in community with one another, whether we're celebrating or whether we're grieving. Music has been part of our faith journey for thousands of years. When people of Israel came out of slavery and crossed the Red Sea on dry land to escape the Egyptian army, Moses' sister Miriam played the tambourine and danced and sang a song of praise to God for deliverance from their captors. Then the Psalms, we usually read a Psalm every week. The Psalms were always sung in worship, not spoken. They were worship songs. They were songs of celebration and praise, songs of lament and mourning. They were to be sung in community. Psalm 100 is brief, but it's one of the most familiar one. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. What good news that is. A psalm, a song that is good news for past, present, and future all at the same time. God's faithfulness is to all generations, and that means forever. And then Mary sang after the angel visited her and told her the incredible news that she would give birth to a son whose name would be Emmanuel, God with us. My soul magnifies the Lord, she says, and my spirit rejoices with God, my Savior. He has been mindful of the lowest state of his servant. From now on, generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. She sang. And the song of Mary again reminds us that God is faithful to all generations. God has promised to be with us through all the generations. And he came in the flesh to be with us in the person of Jesus Christ. When he was born, it was such an important event that a whole choir of angels appeared to some humble, humble shepherds and lit up the sky and sang, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill to all people. See, in God's creation, music is not an afterthought. All of God's creation reverberates with song. Zephaniah 3.17 says, The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. That's breaking good news. Can you imagine God Almighty in heaven singing over you? Can you imagine in your dark nights and hard times that God is with you, so close to you that he can sing over you? And that song goes on and on and on to all generations. What a word of good news and hope that is. And we can sing back to our Creator. As a community that loves deeply and is dearly loved as we are, we can sing the good news. We are surrounded by beautiful mountains. So I want us today to stand and sing. Let's see, what could we sing? I know, go tell it on the mountain. <laughs> Let's stand and sing that wonderful song.
As we leave this place today and as we take the good news into the world, hear these words from Scripture and a song that's called The Blessing. Hear these words. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. May His favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children, and their children, and their children. May his presence go before you, and behind you, and beside you, all around you, and within you, in the morning, in the evening, in your coming, and in your going, in your weeping, and your rejoicing. He is for you. He is for you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. <laughs>